Hi everyone, my name is Milan and welcome to the first video in the permission authorization series. In this video, we're going to set the foundation for building the permission authorization feature. We're going to start the implementation and add some initial components. And then with every video in this series, we're going to add elements on top of this foundation until we get the final implementation. So let's see what problem we are actually trying to solve with permission authorization. I'm starting from the members controller and more specifically the get member by ID endpoint because we have the authorized attribute applied on this endpoint and we require users to be authenticated when hitting this API endpoint. If you missed the previous video where I talked about implementing JSON Web Token authentication, you can take a look at that video here from the link that's going to pop up in the top of your screen. And after you watch that video, I suggest that you return to this one because it's going to be easier to follow. If I take a look at the constructor of the authorized attribute, we can see that we have access to a few properties that we can set. The default constructor accepts a string that specifies the policy to be used for this authorized attribute, but we can also set the authentication scheme, the policy property directly, and the roles. If you are familiar with roles-based authentication, you will typically see something like this, where you specify the roles property, and then you specify a comma delimited string of roles that are required to access this endpoint. So for example, we could require the user to have the registered role when accessing this endpoint, and this is going to check for the roles claim in the JSON web token and see if the registered value is present inside of that claim. Alternatively, you could specify a policy here. For example, a policy name can be can read member, and we would have to specify a custom policy with this name and provide an implementation to verify that the authenticated user can indeed access this endpoint. The problem with both approaches is that you have to specify a hard-coded value for either the roles or the policy, and for the policies, you need to register all of them manually to be able to work inside of ASP.NET Core. So I mentioned that we were going to implement permission authorization Imagine that instead of the authorized attribute, we could type something like this. Let's say we had a has permission attribute and we would specify it here. And then we would have a way to access our permissions, which are going to be either string constants or even better an enum. And this is the approach that we are going to use. And on this enum, we can define a specific value, for example, read member. And this is how we would define the authorization component of this endpoint. So for an authenticated user to be able to access this endpoint, they need to satisfy this authorization attribute, which we are going to create in just a moment, which specifies which permission is required to be able to access that endpoint. So let's start out with the has permission attribute. I'm going to go over to the infrastructure project and inside of the authentication folder, I'm going to add a new class, which is going to hold our has permission attribute. This attribute is going to inherit from the authorized attribute that we just saw. So I'm going to make this class public and sealed and make it inherit from the existing authorized attribute. Let's define a constructor on our attribute. We are going to have just one argument, which is going to be a string representing our permission that is required to satisfy this has permission attribute. And we can pass this permission to our base constructor to specify the policy that is required on the authorized attribute. So I'm going to use this permission to specify a policy that needs to be fulfilled for an authenticated user to be able to pass authorization. Let's also create a class that is going to hold the permissions so I'm going to say permission and for starters, I'm going to make it public and static and I'm just going to add one constant, which is going to be the permission that we had in the members controller a moment ago. And the name of this permission is going to be read member and I'm just going to assign it the same value. All right. So now if I go back to the members controller, I can add a reference to the infrastructure project and we can get access to the has permission attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now this compiles. We have the has permission attribute and we are specifying our permission as a string. 
So this is one way that we can approach this. But a better approach would probably be to use enums instead of constant strings. So let's go ahead and make that change. I'll go to the read member permission and I'm going to turn this class from a static class into an enum. Let's get rid of this constant string and let's define our permission as an actual enum value. So I'm going to say read member and give it a value of one. Now, if I go back to the members controller, you can see that we are going to get a compile error here. This is because the has permission attribute is expecting a string instead of an enum. So I'm going to fix that. Let's go to the has permission attribute and I'm going to change this from a string into a permission enum. So now the members controller should be fine, but I need to convert the permission instance to a string to satisfy the policy that is required for the authorized attribute. And now if I go back to the members controller, you can see that everything compiles. This time we are using enums instead of constant strings. And we have a very elegant way to define which permission is required to access a certain endpoint. Based on our requirements, we can use as much granularity as we need for defining these permissions. We could have one high level permission that we could place on the controller level. For example, if I go into the permission enum, let's say instead of the read member, I want to have a higher level permission, for example, access members. This is going to be a top level permission that is going to allow access to all of the members. I'm going to give it a value of one and make the read member permission a value of two. And if I go back to the members controller, we can define this permission on the controller level right here and specify the has permission attribute. And here I can say permission access members. And now instead of having a specific permission on the endpoint, I can have a high level permission on the entire controller that is going to handle all of the endpoints under this controller. So this approach is very flexible and you can decide which way you want to go. I usually prefer having specific permissions per endpoint, perhaps not a permission for every single endpoint. For example, if I have a few get endpoints, I'm going to use the same permission like this one. So what are going to be our next steps? We need a way to configure which member has which permissions and how we are going to do this is we are going to define roles that we are going to assign to our members and then for each role we are going to configure which permissions that role has. For example, we could have a simple role like registered and it's going to have a specific set of permissions and we may want to have an administrator role that is going to have access to a wider range of permissions because we want our administrator to have more capabilities inside of the application. I hope that you enjoyed this video, even though it's just an introduction to the permission authorization topic. In the next few videos in this series, you're going to see how we're going to implement this to work inside of ASP.NET Core. While you wait for the next video in this series, here are two videos that you can watch to fill the time. And until next time, stay awesome.